The Honourable Member for Truro, Bible Hill, Millbrook, Salmon River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I am pleased to rise to my feet today to do late debate, which uh, topic I have requested. Uh, I was thinking about asking for a, an emergency session because of this uh, important issue that arose in my constituency. Uh, but I decided to just bring it forward uh, today. And it is, I'm going to repeat it again. Therefore, be it resolved that the Liberal government is failing to provide comprehensive services for survivors of sexualized violence in all regions of the province. And the reason that I, I, I call it like this, Mr. Speaker, is because we don't, do not have uh, access, equal access, from one end of the province to the other. And in fact, uh, the sexual assault nurse examiner, which has been added uh, as a program to some areas of the province and will be added into others uh, soon, I'm really, really hoping that we can also add it to Truro, which is, of course, known as the hub of Nova Scotia. It is the center of central Nova Scotia, central Nova, and uh, we are in dire straits there. Uh, there have been a number of, of cases come forward recently of women who have felt that they were uh, not looked after. Mr. Speaker, uh, I wonder if you could ask the, the House to please quiet down. It's very hard to concentrate on this important topic with people speaking really loudly behind me. Do you mind? Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to issues of women's health, women's sexuality, uh, women's abuse, I think that, unfortunately, history has shown that we have ignored the issue and swept it under the rug for far too long. And here in Nova Scotia, it still pains me to read of stories where there is sexualized violence in domestic situations, in situations where uh, somebody goes out with somebody for a night and winds up dead in a uh, garbage can or in a um, hockey bag floating down a river, like the Myra River, for instance, in, in Cape Breton. Um, women are to be cherished. Women are to be respected to be treated as equals. And unfortunately, our society is not there yet. Um, I think it was Gloria Steinem said, it's wonderful that women are now bringing up their, their girls and teaching their girls how to behave, but that we need to now bring up our boys and get them to behave in ways as well that are more acceptable and more respectful towards women and girls. So, Mr. Speaker, at the end of August, we, we all heard the story about a 22-year-old uh, young Truro woman who visited the emergency department of our Colchester East Hans Health Center to report that she had been raped. The visibly upset young woman was allegedly handed two pamphlets and turned away. Um, because the SANE program, Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner, is not available yet in Truro. It was left up to her mother to drive her to Antigonish so that she could talk to members of the Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner SANE program there at St. Martha's Regional Hospital. And apparently she was not told that she could have gone to New Glasgow, which is somewhat closer. Still. The story of this woman's horrible experience has now prompted another woman to come forward. And this is not public yet, but I have been given permission by that woman to talk about her story, uh, but she does not want me to use her name because she has already been so traumatized by what has happened that she does not want her three children to be affected anymore. But, um, she emailed me, and she has emailed the Minister of Health, and uh, she has shared her own experience. And I'm not sure if the Minister has read that yet, but she has sent it to both of us. 
Uh, she too went to the Colchester East Hence Health Centre uh, in need of support following a sexual assault. This time it was by her husband of 17 years and uh, she went because she felt that she had been raped and abused and she was in dire need of help. She said that she felt re-victimized by the experience. She writes, and I quote, after reading about another order, woman order, reaching please. out. I'd like to remind the honorable member, it, it's against the rules of this chamber to read a constituent's email without identifying, without identifying the, to, you have to be able to identify the quote. So from whom the quote came. The Honourable Member for Truro, Bible Hill, Millbrook, Salmon River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the woman said to me, and twice now she's contacted me, that after reading about another woman, she reached out for help herself, and being denied, she knew that she had to share her experience. She couldn't hold it in any longer. She says she didn't want any sympathy. She didn't want attention. She just wants this to never, ever happen to anybody else again. And she's calling on me as her MLA to make this change happen immediately. She's also calling on the Minister of Health and begging him to do something to make this change immediately. And she says the reason why she was so traumatized and re-traumatized was because we do not have a sane program in Truro. Um, Mr. Speaker, with huge public campaigns like the Me Too movement and the raped but not reported movement, which maybe some people may remember was the Canadian equivalent that came out a couple of years actually before the Me Too movement, um, all of a sudden women were putting hashtags and putting on Facebook and Twitter their own uh, stories and, and uh, signs saying raped but never reported. And it, it was an empowering time for women but also a, a watershed moment. And we cannot let that moment pass by, I don't think, without actually making it make a difference, which means acting. And as people who um, not only create the laws, but enforce the laws and regulate the laws, it is our duty to try and um, do the very best that we can to change the status quo. And I think that looking after women, taking their um, issues seriously and acting immediately is the way forward. So Mr. Speaker, um, as we raise public awareness around sexualized violence uh, and discuss the supports that are available or more often shamefully not yet available, increasing numbers of people are coming forward ready to share their experience and seek help. When they do, um, as elected representatives, I believe we have a responsibility to make sure that the services that they need are available wherever they are in the province. It's unacceptable that emergency services like the SANE program would only be available to some people in some communities. Um, I'm told that Yarmouth is going to now be put on the list, which is wonderful. Cape Breton is going to be put on the list, which is wonderful. But where is Truro on that list? Uh, again, we are a community of many, many people. We have two universities, a, a university and a college in our community. And we all know that there's many uh, sexual assaults and issues that arise on university campuses. So we need to, to make sure that we um, keep that in mind as well. Mr. Speaker, um, I believe that a committed and sustained government funding for the full spectrum of services is required. Services for survivors of sexualized violence must be trauma-informed, culturally competent, and available to all Nova Scotians. Women, men, LGBTQ, youth, seniors, Indigenous people, Acadians, Francophone, African Nova Scotians, immigrants, and refugees. 
Services must provide equitable access to information and resources across diverse communities and organizations. So please believe me when I say that when an individual is sexually assaulted, they are seriously traumatized and they will need all the help that they can to, to move forward. So yeah. thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Speaker.